Question 2. A. Part 1. Define transition elements. Okay, elements which form one or more stable ion with incomplete d orbitals. Okay, this one is a standard definition of transition elements. Um, I give one uh, example, uh, the ion 2 and ion 3. So the ion is a uh, transition element uh, because it can form uh, the, these uh, uh, two major uh, cation. So from here uh, we can see the electronic configurations for this ion 2 is argon 3d6, uh, which the 3d uh, orbitals has 6 electrons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and this we call incomplete d orbitals. For the uh, ion 3 uh, is the argon 3d5, also is incomplete d orbital. So when an, an element or the this transition element is able to form uh, one or more stable ion like this with uh, incomplete d orbitals, then uh, we consider this uh, uh, element is a transition element. Part 2. Explain why transition elements can form complex ion. Uh, for this one, um, the the answer in the mark scheme is actually uh, this one. Okay, they have uh, vacant d orbitals that are energetically uh, accessible. Okay, so this one is uh, I I I'm not really agree with this answer because uh, it is not really used the vacant d orbitals. Uh, um, Example that I told you just now, like ion two, ion three, because the the d orbitals is actually uh, occupied. You no, know, there there are electrons in there, so it's actually not really used the vacant d orbitals. Uh, we we need to know these transition elements, uh, especially the these uh, the the iron, chromium, uh, copper. So these transition elements, uh, they have uh, the empty four s and the 4p orbital so this empty orbitals uh, is the one that uh, can form dative bond uh, with the ligand and uh, they can form complex ion um, it's actually not vacant the orbitals now uh, so it's actually the vacant orbitals uh, in this uh, uh, transition metal cation yeah, so hope you understand and know what is going on, right? So uh, this is just uh, uh, yeah, the, the, my point of view, right? Um, for D, uh, so B, uh, the 3D orbitals uh, in the, an isolated um, this uh, silver ion are degenerate. Okay, define degenerate D orbitals. Very easy. Whenever it's a degenerate, uh, or degenerate orbitals means uh, the orbitals they must be uh, at the same energy level like this like the 3d uh, subshell in there there are 3d orbitals oh, sorry five 3d orbitals one two three four five and these five orbitals they must be uh, at the same energy level when we say that they are degenerate orbitals of course, when they form the ligands, uh, when they form the complex ion with ligands, uh, then of course it will have the this splitting. But uh, before they form the complex ion, uh, so it will be degenerate, right? So again, degenerate means uh, the orbitals they must have the same energy level. Part two, sketch the shape of the three D X Y. Uh, first, three D orbitals uh, most mostly they they ha have four loops except the D Z square. So first, you need to draw the four loops in the X Y plane uh, because it say X Y, so it's not X square Y square. X square Y square. Then the four loops need to along the X Y axis. When you see this X Y means uh, the four loops must between the X Y axis, and of course need to in the xy plane so this is the xy plane so within the xy plane the four loops must between the xy axis like this uh, so you just draw four loops like this huh? part c 
Dolan's reagents can use to distinguish the aldehyde and ketone. Uh, this is the, actually the AS uh, organic cap uh, for to test the the this aldehyde. Uh, and Dolan's reagents is contain, contains this compound. Okay, the silver with the two ammonia and uh, with this hydroxide as counter ion, uh, which can be prepared in the two-step process. Okay, step one, aqueous sodium hydroxide added dropwise to the silver nitrate to form the silver oxide. This is a brown precipitate. I believe most of you already did that uh, in the uh, paper three last time. Uh, for the step two, aqueous ammonia added dropwise to these uh, brown precipitates to form the colorless solution which is this compound right uh, so this uh, this is a coordination compound um, now construct the equation uh, for these two steps uh, this one majority uh, or most of candidates they uh, they couldn't answer um, so first you need to follow the instruction uh, the silver nitrates with the sodium hydroxide uh, first you for, of course form the brown precipitate so you put, you put these three and uh, silver uh, these uh, silver oxide okay after that uh, then you just uh, put the, the the byproducts that form which is the silver uh, sorry the, the sodium nitrate so sodium nitrate and of course the h2o right for the second step uh, this one uh, first uh, you need to use the the brown precipitate, the Ag2O that produced, reacts with the ammonia. Then, because the question already mentioned is uh, form the colorless solution containing this compound. So, means you just need to put this compound on right hand side. And of course, you need to balance uh, the whole equation using the H2O here. Okay, no choice uh, you must do in this way. Huh? This is a standard equation for the uh, Dolan's reagent preparation. Okay, part D, name the shape of the complex ion. Okay, so this is the silver with two ammonia. Uh, is something like this. Uh, the two ammonia molecules, which is uh, ligand, now form the dative bond with the silver ion. Okay, state the bond angle of HNAG. So HNAG means this one. Uh, this one is uh, because now the nitrogen uh, with four bonds, four sigma bonds, so it's tetrahedral geometry. Therefore, we know that the bond angle is 109.5 degree. Right. Uh, and another one is the NAGN. Okay, it means uh, NAGN is this one. Uh, so this one is, of course, 180 because the silver, uh, uh, these are... Uh, ion is uh, the what I call central uh, atom now. Um, so it has two uh, dative bond means two electron uh, crowds. So therefore, uh, it has one eighty uh, degree for this bond angle. So it's linear basically. It's linear. Okay. So the bond angle is one eighty degree. Part E. And the uh, electrochemical cell uh, uses the uh, the silver oxide as the positive electrode, and the zinc as negative electrode, immersed in alkaline electrolyte. Uh, so before you answer this question, of course you need to know uh, what is the positive electrode and negative electrode means. In the electrochemical cell, when it's the positive electrode means uh, is the one that gains electron. When it's against electron means it's a cathode. And the zinc is a negative electron, means it's the one that produces electron, so it's a cathode. So, so this is a basic understanding you must have. Uh, and uh, overall cell reaction is given. Okay, this one. Okay, complete the half equation for the reaction at each electrode. Um, if, if, you want, if you want the standard way to make it, uh, so uh, you can of course obtain this half equation from this uh, from this overall. Uh, to make sure you get the the, the correct answer, uh, it's better for you to do in this way. All right. Uh, first, you need to start with the uh, the silver oxide. 
So from this overall equation, we know that the silver oxide uh, is uh, produced or is formed the silver. So you start with these two, silver oxide from silver. Then you need to balance the, uh, uh, the this equation, uh, balance oxygen. Uh, of course, you put two in, uh, first to balance the silver. And you balance the oxygen using H2O. So you put the H2O on right hand side here. Then you need to balance the hydrogens uh, on the left hand side. So you put two H plus here. Then after that, you balance the charge. So put two electrons here. So the left and right hand side now all balanced. Be because in this uh, reaction, it say that it's in alkaline uh, electrolyte. So you make, need to make sure uh, it's in this uh, uh, basic condition. So you need to add uh, hydroxide because here there are two uh, hydrogen ion. So you need to add two hydroxide okay, to uh, remove or to eliminate this uh, H plus. And when you add two hydroxide on left hand side, right hand side you need to add the same amount. Make sure it's balanced. Okay, after that you get this equation. Uh, you get this uh, this uh, half equation uh, in the uh, this uh, basic form. Right. Okay. Then after that uh, you just uh, okay cut this uh, H2O. Okay. Then eventually you get this uh, silver oxide with H2O uh, and uh, two electrons to form the silver and two hydroxide. Okay, this is how you get the first equation here. This one. Uh, for the second equation, it's actually quite easy. You can directly form that uh, because it's uh, zinc to form zinc hydroxide. So basically, you just need to add two hydroxide and uh, with zinc. Then it's formed zinc hydroxide. You just put two electrons to balance it. Uh, if you not really sure how to form this, you can use the same method as just now to do something like this. You start with zinc and form the zinc hydroxide. Then you balance the uh, oxygen here, right? Because here there are two oxygens, so you need to put two H2O here. Okay, and after that, uh, you need to balance the hydrogen. Put the two hydro uh, hydrogen ions on the right hand side. After that, you put two electrons here to balance the charge. Make sure both sides uh, is neutral. Okay, after that, uh, you just uh, try to uh, remove the water, right? So cut it. Then you get this equation. Okay. Um, for this uh, part F. Um, Coordination com uh, polymers are made when a bidentate ligand acts as a bridge uh, between the different metal cation. Okay, this is a very uh, important idea uh, because now you need to use the bidentate ligand uh, to link the two uh, um, complex ions together. And uh, under certain conditions, uh, these uh, are RU3 uh, positive. Um, and the bidentate uh, ligand DPS, this one, uh, can form coordination polymers, okay, which is uh, which containing this one, this uh, complex ion. Um, so means you need to use this complex ion to form the polymer. Um, and uh, bidentate ligands uh, DPS uh, uses uh, each of uh, the nitrogen atom to bond to different. Uh, uh, IO3 positive, uh, this is another info, means you must use the bidentic ligands to link the two metal cations together uh, and after that uh, completes the, this uh, figure 2.3 means this one, uh, draw the structure for the coordination polymers uh, and show two repeat units, uh, these are all the things that needed. Okay, uh, This is the one that really uh, good because it's telling you just use this one to represent the DPS ligand. So you no need to draw the whole thing, right? Okay, so uh, now let's start. Okay, this, this is a standard answer that given in the mark scheme. Uh, so it's a two repeat unit, one, two. So two repeat unit. And uh, this is how it links. Um, to make you understand how this, uh, this uh, uh, polymers form, so uh, it's better to show this one. Okay. Uh, I just used two uh, complex uh, ion uh, to show how the bonds form. Okay, when the, these two complex ion they uh, they get near to each other, uh, things might happen or the polymerization might ha might, might happen. Uh, so, so let's say um, K 
okay this uh, the diff one break and uh, this uh, the diff bond break and this nitrogen now form new bonding with this uh, are you okay this metal cation and this nitrogen now move and form another dative bond with the another metal cation and of course this one th there will be another um, the nitrogen form dative bond with this are you this metal cation so means um, if let's say now bond breaking happen like this so therefore it will form okay this one this nitrogen now form uh, bonding with this RU and this will form another with another metal cation so therefore it will form this stative bond okay this okay let's say this nitrogen is from the position just now right so it will be the linkage uh, between the two uh, complex ion to form this polymer um, this is uh, one way to uh, illustrate how the polymer chains form Okay, if you uh, if you want also it can be something like uh, uh, two complex ion and you put the bidentate ligand right so means uh, initially is the bidentate ligand right so this one uh, so n with this one okay with the lone pair and it formed the diff bond with this uh, this uh, metal cation okay to form this linkage also can uh, it depends on how you uh, imagine that right so as long it can form this uh, this structure right so uh, the means uh, if you under if you form the this uh, polymer chain right uh, when there are more complex ion okay so this is how the the these uh, the two repeat units form right okay that's all thank you